Well, praise the Lord, saints. Is that time again? Time to gather around you. The phones or your iPads and, and sharing with the Word of God. And, and we do thank the Lord for this opportunity. Thank God for this, this time that we are living in now, this precious time that God is still being mindful of us, still making a way for us to share the gospel and hear the gospel. And we, and we appreciate him for that. You know, God could have closed all, all, everything out, closed this stuff out, but, but God, he uh, mindful of us to help us. You know, he's trying to strengthen us, trying to keep us to keep us going on, trying to keep us encouraged, you know. And I, and I thank God for that, you know. I mean, he's, I mean, he's just a remarkable God. He's unexplainable. You can't explain him. It's because he's God. He's God by himself. And I thank God for him waking up this morning, clothing us in the right man. I thank him for protecting all of you and keeping you and sustaining you and helping you and being offensive about your mind. You know, that's the important thing for us to have protection about our mind. Because, you know, Paul, uh, because with the mind, I serve the Lord. So we're going to need this mind to serve God. And I thank God for this mind. You know, we may not be very strong, may not be running real fast, but you know what the scripture says about that? The race ain't given to the swift and the battle ain't given to the strong. But it tells us that in Matthew 24 that he that endured to the end. The same shall be saved. So we just keep praying. God help us to endure until the very end. Because, you know, we don't know what's out there for the future. We don't know what kind of trials and tests God got set up for us. But we pray God put that spirit in us that we will endure. We have this mind to just endure regardless of what. Stand firm and believe that God is in control as he's in charge. And he promised I won't leave you and I won't, I won't forsake you. I'll be with us. Not God is, he don't lie to us. And I thank God for that. Thank God he's a man of truth. To tell the truth. And I thank God he don't say stuff to just be telling us something. He speaks truth. And I thank God for it. We're going to go in prayer tonight. We're going to ask God if he would bless the service. And we certainly appreciate all of you that have tuned in. And, and you know, and you may not be able to do it tonight, but invite somebody. Let them know when the broadcast is coming on and, you know, Tim the journey, and we pray that God give a word some that help them, that encourage them, you know, that uh, you know, help them to keep themselves ready to meet Jesus and keep their eyes up on Jesus. So we're going to go in prayer, and I thank God for you. Father, thank you tonight. Lord, I appreciate you. Lord, I really appreciate you, Father, for, Father, being God. Thank you for being my personal Savior. Thank you for being my protector, my provider, my deliverer, my sin forgiver. I thank you for being all that to me, Lord. Thank you for bringing us through these years, Lord. Many trials and tests, Lord, but you, you never left us one time. And I thank you, Lord, for being with the people, for being offensive about them. You told us your name was a strong tower. Lord, and the righteous run into it. And they're saved. Thank you, Father, for being this strong tower for you. God, we need you in this hour, Lord, to be our strong tower. And let us run into you, Lord, and be safe. Lord, we pre really appreciate you tonight, Lord, for opening up this door. Let this door be open for us. Thanks for these systems that you got, the people got set up, Lord, where we can minister, where we can fellowship. Lord, through this scripture, through the word, thank you for this, Lord, uh, giving me knowledge of how to do all this stuff. We appreciate it. Lord, speak to our hearts tonight, Lord. Those that will be listening, I pray that you get their mind and get their attention, Lord, and that they'll focus upon you, Lord, and they'll make up in their mind, Lord, that they're going to hold on to you. They're going to strive. They're going to cleave to you. Lord, we thank you for all those. Thank you for the children's and the grandchildren, Lord, and all our in-laws and relatives, I thank you. Lord, I thank you, ask you to heal the sick tonight. God, deliver the bound. Look in the hospital, God, and go in there and get those out of you. got people that are in the hospital. Sustain them. Preserve them. Keep them, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, move for our nation. Lord, if you will, if there is another blessing, in, Lord, for this nation, I'm asking you, Lord, if you would bless this nation. This is what we pray. You told us to ask you, Father. I'm asking you in your name. But God, we got, by the same token, we say your will be done. And Lord, help us to be satisfied and plead that your will be done in this spirit. 
And God, we are thanking for tonight. Give us up to speak to you tonight, Lord. Give me the heart and the minds of those, Lord, that speak to me from heaven. God, direct my thoughts and my words that it can touch people's heart and touch their mind, God. And, oh, Lamb of God, it can do whatever it that needs to be done in their hearts and their spirit, God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God, I'm a vessel, I'm yours. And I'm asking you, God, to use me. Lord, that song say, can you use some? Can you use me, Lord? God, use us tonight to proclaim just your word, Father, to those that will be listening. And, then, and I pray this word go out, Lord, to others. Lord, that's by some chance, Lord, that they will maybe, maybe can pick me up some kind of way, Lord, and, and let this word, God, let it happen. Let me be going through something, God. I'm about ready to give up. Throw their hands up, Jesus, but some kind of way touch them, Father. That, Lord, that, this is my desire. This is my call. This is my will. It's called those, Lord, to hold on to you. And that those that don't have it, they'll find you. And they'll trust you. In the name of Jesus, we we'll thank you. Praise God. And we appreciate those of you tuning in. We thank God for you. This we cover your prayer. And we'll pray one for another. And that's God to sustain the folk. Or without Jesus, we was talking the other day. I talked to Brother Fred and I talked to Sister Bruce too. And I said, we can't do it. Didn't mean to how much money you got, what your position is, or what kind of clout you got, who you know. And all boiled down to it, just going to be Jesus and Jesus only. People are going to be surrounded by money and they still ain't be able to help them, can't deliver them. They'll be surrounded by friends and all their uh, position and authority, but they still ain't going to be able to help. Ain't but one thing that's going to help folks, and that's Jesus. And that's why I preach them. Somebody, you might be a Jesus. At it. I don't care. It don't make no difference. I, I believe this in my heart. And it all sell. Ain't but one somebody that can help you. And that's Jesus. I don't care who you are. You can have a $10 million in the bank. Ain't delivering. Ain't going to come through your money. Jesus is going to have to be there before you can help you. And I, I said, God, help me to lift you up. Help me to get the people's eyes up on you, Lord. Because I know when it's, when it's all said and done. And if one somebody on this down here that can help us, that's Jesus. Thank God. What we have, who we are, what our name is. And how many friends we got? It ain't gonna help you, folks. Jesus, don't somebody help you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a fanatic for Jesus. I try to be a fanatic for Jesus, you know. All that means just you're a fan of him and you're addicted to him. But I appreciate the Lord, and I, I pray that you hold on. I pray that you uh, be encouraged. You know, we call and keep Sister Levon Philip in prayer. We talk to her, and keep her in prayer too. And you know, just several ones, Sister, Sister Dukes and her daughter. You know, keep him in prayer. They gotta sustain and gotta uh, raise them up. Thank God. We're gonna go to the scriptures tonight. We ain't gonna hold you long, but we really appreciate this opportunity. And I pray God that He just keep offense about our mind. I tell you, the Bible said in in in, in um, He feed. We're not wrath against flesh and blood, folks. We're wrath against spirits, and that's exactly what we're wrath against spirits. Spirits of Satan, the influence of Satan. We're wrath against that, so not flesh and blood. So. We need Jesus to help us because, you know, flesh ain't no match for the for the devil. You know, our flesh, we just can't, we can't outwit the devil in our flesh. It's going to take the Spirit of God. And as God, you know, we're wrath, but you sustain your people. Help us some kind of way. God, have mercy and help your people. I know we're going through a lot of stuff, folks. Some kind of way, ask God, the Lord, help me to get my mind made up that I'll follow you, that I'll go with you. Thank God that I'm going to turn around. On the book of Matthew, we're going to be reading out of Matthew, starting Matthew, Matthew 26, chapter 26, and we're going to read through verse 31 to 35, then we'll skip over to 47, 53, then we'll skip over, because I'll be calling this out as I go. But right now, let's go to Matthew 26 and verses, of, and I appreciate your prayers. Continue to keep us up in prayer. They've got to, they got to sustain us, they help us, they will speak with us. You know, we're praying this much, God, speak to us. Restore us back. Get us back to you. Get us back, God, where you talk to us, where you, you know, show us the way. And I've been asking God, God, if you just help us to get us back in that place. That's what I want to get back in that place. God, put something in us that help us to, Lord, to get back to you. Praise God. Matthew 26, verses 31 through 35. Listen to what it says here.
Then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter asked and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three times. Peter said unto him, Though I should deny Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the, the disciples. Verse 47. And while he had spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came in with him a great mother too with swords and starved from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same as he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up thy sword. That was, this is what Peter said, Put up thy sword in this place. For all those that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now? Pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels. Now listen. Jesus told Peter, Peter, you're gonna you're gonna deny me for this night, you're gonna deny me three times. No, but Peter was said, Do I die which I won't forsake this? I'll be with you. No, not me. But you know what? Why Jesus I won't speak this night being in that atmosphere. Peter spoke that stuff because he, he was in that presence, he was in that atmosphere. He had listened to Jesus teach and his words, and he saw Jesus do miracles and all that stuff. And uh, man, he just feel like, man, I'm gonna be with you. I, man, I ain't gonna deny you. But he was in that under that influence of Jesus. He said, I ain't gonna deny you. I'll die with you. I, I will not deny you. But Jesus, listen to Peter before this, before this night over, when the cop on go crow three times. I mean, you're going to crow. Before you crow, you're going to deny me three times for the cock crow this night. And then when Jesus, and I'm going to get on down, when Jesus, they better take Jesus, Peter jumped up and got his sword out and cut, some say he went to cut that guy ear off, cut his head off, but you know, the guy's kind of duck and he did just come down with his, and cut this guy ear off. But this is what Peter had, and this is what Peter uh, 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 used to fight with. And he thought it's going to be a fighting battle. It's going to be a battle where he can, he said, I won't deny it. I'll be right with you because he knew he was ready to fight physically. But Jesus wasn't, Jesus wasn't off no physical battle. And we explain when we get on down here. He said, you're going to deny me, Peter. You know? No, I'm not going to deny you. Sometimes we are safe. Sometimes, you know, we get in, if we get in the church or where we get people shouting and dancing and Good music going on, they're singing and stuff like that, and we feel good. We get under that influence, we get under that atmosphere of the praises of God and the spirit be falling, and, and then we are, and then we are make big promise to God. Lord, I'm gonna serve you, I want to serve you. Because we're in the atmosphere of that. We're in the presence of that thing, you know. And then we make vow to God, but God's listening. It's best not make no vow and don't keep. He said, God, he, he ain't going to hold you guiltless. If you make a vow, he expects you to keep that vow. Don't let your mouth say something that cause you to sin. So sometimes when people, they be in an influence of it. spirit. Spirit may be high. They, they are, uh, 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 make all kinds of promises to God, just like Peter did. God, I, I never, because he had been in, in the presence of Jesus, he just figured, man, if I have to I fight my way out of this, then we'll fight. 
I'm going to read on that in a few minutes here, but because he was in the influence of Jesus, he thought, should I stand for Jesus? That made people now, they, they get in the present, in that, under the influence, under that present, and then they feel like, man, I'm going to stand. I've seen it happen. Well, I'm going to stand for Jesus. I, and people, and I know people right now, going back out there, but when they made that promise, because they was under the, in that present, in that environment, under that influence of the Spirit of God, and they made that this is why the Bible said in, in uh, 2 Corinthians there, examine yourself. Let's see where you be in the faith. Now, now examine yourself. It ain't good to speak stuff. We need to speak stuff from our heart. We need to search our heart. If we speak stuff, we need to go back and search our heart and find out it's, it's that there. It's a lot of us, man, don't let the promise of God go. We don't let, I ain't holding on to what we promised God years ago. You know, because sometimes the thing that got rough, thing that got tight, thing that time that got tough, thank God we are, we, are, we, we are letting go. But when we said those things, we made them problem. We was, oh, we was in the presence, under that influence of it. And man, we felt like, Lord, I'll just be with you. I'll go with you. I'll do anything for you because we're in that very presence. You know when you get in church, you get to shouting and praising God and, and the Spirit of God is falling. Man, you feel like, oh, yes, I love it. Lord, I love you with everything. I love you, God. I'm going to please you. You be mean it. You be mean it at that time. But it be that presence of the Lord that there, you know. You know, Saul, they prophesied. They thought, said, Saul, he among the prophets. He a prophet? Listen. Under the influence, we get under the influence. Sometimes we, we need to not get under the influence and say stuff and don't hold it up, don't keep it, don't abide by it, don't stick with it. Because you know? if a devil happened to you, you know, listen, verse 69, same chapter, verse 69. We, we read from 69 through, uh, we read 69 through uh, 75. Listen. Now, Peter's. Said without in the palace. And the damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of, Nath of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them, That were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied. With a note, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said, uh, said to Peter, Surely thou art also one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. And he began, then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the words that Jesus which said unto him before the cockerel, thou shalt deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Listen, Jesus, Peter made that promise to Jesus. You know, now we're getting down to Jesus. Listen here, Jesus, Jesus, I don't know him. Jesus, peace, I'm willing to fight, I'm willing to do things, but man, this man done told me, look here, put your sword up. Peter thought, I'll be with you. Like Peter thought he can fight his way through. But now here Jesus and told Peter, Peter, put your sword up into his plate. So if you live by the sword, you're going to perish by the sword. So now Peter ain't got no other way out. And this man told me to put my sword up. Now how, what I'm doing, they're saying, now, man, you get down to where the rubber meets the road at. And they're talking about you want his disciple. And here they finna crucify Jesus, finna kill him. And Peter I don't know him. Man, I ain't got no meaning to fight. I ain't got no way for I don't know the man. I told you I don't know him. That he done took away all my, all my, uh, my ability to help, ability to stand by him. He done told me to put my sword up. Now, Peter, I don't know what to do but deny him. So, uh, I ain't got nothing to fight with. I ain't got nothing to, uh, I don't know this man. You know, and he began to curse. But he spoke all that thing because he was in the presence of Jesus right there. There wasn't no, no trouble coming on. And he felt good. And he said, I ain't going to be with you. You know, people that promise God stuff and they don't, you know. I know my, I know. He's talking about my nephew. And I don't think he watched it. He may watch stuff a little. When you make God a promise, hold to it. Do your best to hold to it. Cleave to it. You know. 
Examine yourself. And see why, yeah, we make prom God promise when we're feeling good or when God does stuff for us. And we make God promise the Lord, I'll do it now because we in that presence of thing. But then when you get down by the rubber meet the road, then the situation changes. Man, that determination you had changed. That love you had changes. Man, the word that you have spoken, they changes. They turn to something else. So we got to examine ourselves. We, 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 we get in the atmosphere of things we speak, but you know, we didn't need to, before the Bible said, man, we are not to speak words so quickly. Because we got our lips, got our mouth. The safe thing to God, and God said he's going to hold us what we promise him, he's going to hold us to that. But we don't promise him, God don't force us, don't twist our arm. Arm to make a, no kind of promise to him. You do, do not twist our iron. The revelation said, Behold, he stand at the door and knock. So it, when we make promises to God, we make sure we know what we're doing and ask God to help us. But just don't make them promises to the Lord. Because he's going to hold you responsible for that. He said, Out of your own mouth, he's going to judge you. Out of your own mouth, he's going to judge us. I pray God have mercy upon our soul and help us to cleave to you. God ain't let, he, look, he, he, he he holding us responsible. He's going to hold us accountable of what we say, the thing we say, the thing we do. And that's what we get in that atmosphere. Don't just get all excited and, and say stuff. But the Lord is going to hold us to it. Listen. This is what Matthew 13 and verse 20 through 21. Matthew 13. Just bear with me a few minutes. Matthew 13, verse 20 through 21. Talking about this seed, the seed that fell. But he that received this seed in stony places, the same is he that hears the word and immediately re receives it with joy, rejoice, receives it. Yet he has not root in himself. But do it for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by, he is offended. He get excited. He just worried. I think Revelation, I believe it's 10, say, uh, 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 John told him, give me this book. Told him, give me that book. And he told him, take this book and eat it. Eat it up. Eat it all up. So it's going to be sweet in your mouth. But once it gets in your belly, it's going to get bitter. So this guy here, man, he received, he said, them that receive the seed in stony places get excited about the word of God. They get excited, oh yeah, man, a meal of joy. But, but we receive the thing. But then because we don't have nothing to hold us up, when tribulation, persecution arises, we offend it. People get excited about the word of God when they come to them. Man, people get excited about property. They get all excited about property. They shout. Man, they'll fall out. They'll just pray. They'll go out and tell them folks about, man, the word of profit they got up on them. But when they come down to heeding to it, you know, sounding up, uh, loving our neighbor after that self, that sound good, don't it? Don't under, when you talk about it, it sound good. Don't on the other half, you had them do, oh, look, man, this sound good. Man, oh, I like to be in that place. And it's good until you until you get down and have to do this. Then it get bitter when you actually have to love your enemy, when you actually have to hold your peace, when you actually have to do the other that you had them, what do they bring out? Then it's get bitter. You know? But we rejoice when we hear that stuff. We get a word of prophecy, we rejoice because, oh, that man make me feel good. But then when you come down to it, well, you have to really do this stuff, it gets bitter. But because we be in that presence of, of God, we be in that atmosphere of God, and we and we say stuff and do stuff, man, man, we need to got to be determined. Say, God, help me to hold on, help me to keep my vow, help me to keep my promise. Lord, I go with you. If you just do this for me, Lord, I go with you. Let me say, a little a little drop of rain here. Man, we stand away from God. Man, a little wind blow, a little snow, a little, a little situation rises up, you know. We stay from God because we don't have nothing within ourselves. We receive it. We get excited about this word. And it sounds very sweet. Hearing the word of God, man, it, it ain't nothing like hearing the word of God. But it's go farther than Matthew 7. Man, he that hears these things, man, and doeth them. 
It's going farther than just hearing the word of God, man. It, 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 that's, a, that's a hearing time and that's a doing time. Because we get all excited, I learned not to make God a, 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 a lot of promises. I, I learned that. Don't make God a bunch of promises. Lord, give you work. Oh, Lord, I'll go for you. Lord, I'll do it for you. Let me tell you something. Sometimes a headache. Keep you away from God. Keep you out of church. Don't show up. I'm not talking about church now because I know we're going through this old this virus time. So I'm not speaking on folks not coming to church because I'm not trying to ask anybody to do that. But before this stuff happening, any little thing, because we got excited when we heard it. You hear the word, you get excited. But man, when you come down to having to do this stuff, then it gets bitter. Sometimes it gets hard. It, it gets uh, uh, denying yourself and taking up the cross. It's come down to uh, counting up the call. When you really get down to that place where Jesus said, count this cause up, we get down, written down, right down with it. Where we ask God to count this cause up, it gets a little hard, folks. It gets a little self denial. We get in this, we get in the spirit of God in that atmosphere of God, get in that. And we didn't say anything because we fear to do it. Man, we feel like, man, we, we go, oh, Lord, I'm going to love you. I'm going to go for you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Because we're under that influence. We're under that spirit. We're under, in that environment. We say this stuff. You know what? Something got to be on the inside of us. Something got, look at it. It ain't going to be easy all the time. Let me tell you something. Hearing the word of God is one thing, but doing it is something else. That's been, that's been, thing get really tight then when you're having to do it. Listen. Listen to, uh, listen to John, John 6, 53 through 69. I'm going to go to Acts, but I think I might read John for you. John 6, St. John 6, verses 53 through 69. Thank you, Father. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in it. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. And the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your father did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Now all that stuff sounds good. Man, that sounds really good. Living forever and stuff. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore his disciples, when they heard that this said, this is a hard saying. When he thought to my eat my flesh and drinking my blood and stuff like that, they said, look at man, this is a hard saying. I really didn't know what that meant. But they said, this is a hard saying. How can we eat this man's flesh and, and drink his blood? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, do this offend you. All of this on the miracles. They saw Jesus uh, healing people and turning water into wine and, and mother blind and fish in the load and all and open the blinding eyes and all this stuff, man, right there with them. They were with them. But Jesus said, they're going to come to the place, thank God, where this rubber going to meet the road, going to come to this place where you're going to have to give your coat. And he said, these sins get hot. These sins got hot. Jesus said, do you mama this unto them? Do this offend you? What if you shall see the Son of Man a sinner of why he walked before. It is the spirit that quickened the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now remember that they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. But Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore say I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. They went back. They were excited about Jesus on the mirror. They, oh, they, was, man, they followed Jesus around, man. All oh, this, uh, the mirror that he done and the healing taking place. And 
Now, when Jesus said, yeah, eat my flesh and drink my blood, you know, and this, this is a hard saying. And many of the Bible said, stop following Jesus. Folk today, folk, let me tell you, as long as everything going good for you and everything going right, people are right there testifying of Jesus. They're willing to be with them. Doing that thing get hard. When we got to eat Jesus' flesh and drink it, but the thing get hard, then people give up on him. When they're getting through some kind of test, some kind of trial and test, and they can't hear from God, they don't, they don't see God moving, look like God ain't moving, looking over there. They turn from God. And they stop. Because all they were they was all happy when they felt that presence of God. But we just can't feel the presence of God and, 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 and go with him. Then after the Spirit of God looked like it ain't there, then we, we leave him, we turn. You know that they told about Moses. We don't know what happened to this fellow Moses. After he done brought him out, let's make a God to go before him. That we don't know what's happening. Now, these here right now, what the hell? I don't know what's going on here, man. We, we, this saying got hard, man. Look here. We ain't going to follow this man no more. Thing. Man, we got to really deny ourselves. Man, we got to love our enemy. Man, we got to do good. We got to. But this is what it's called for. We get in the presence of that spirit. And we make promise to God. And God don't want us just making promise to him and ain't got no mind. Well, we have a mind to keep, but when things get tough and hard, thank God we give up on it. That's the time to cleave to God. That's the time to God help me to believe you. God help me to be steadfast and unmovable. This is God. Look, we surprised God put us back on the wheel. Do it like you did the, the, the potter did the clay. Thank God Mars in your hand and remold and refashion us into a vessel about to do something for us. Put us back on this wheel. Remold us and remake us. And, but we just won't be looking for the fish in the load. But God will be God in hard time. He'll still be God to us. In trouble time, he'll still be the same God to us. You know? Look like when God stopped moving, look like we give up on him. But Jesus said, listen here. Then said Jesus unto them, unto the trail, will ye also go away. After men them stopped following Jesus, Jesus asked them, said, we also go away. Verse 68, then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Remember up here what Jesus said, the Spirit, the words I speak of there are spirit and life. Jesus asked that we go away, peace of man. Where are we going to? You got the words of life, eternal life with you. They just told us the, the words is spirit of life. Thank God for Peter and them that are getting converted there. You know. And he had denied him. You know. I guess you know, Peter went out, man, and wept because he realized, thank God, that Jesus had, and, and that the words he got him spoken said that. I guess that helped Peter out. Sometimes that may help us out, not to give him safe stuff, then we find ourselves falling back, falling short of it. Giving up on it after we have made God that promise. And God just sat there and looked at us and shake his head. Shake his head. Did I not tell you to count this cost up? Did I not tell you? Because the way get hard, folks, don't you give up. You got to keep cleaving to Jesus in the way. Man, God, don't just worry about the good time. You make your choice because of the good time, because God is blessing you, you know. Thank God be God when you're struggling to pay you too to be. You got to be that same God when you struggle sometimes. Some months you have to struggle to get your rent paid. He's still that same God. You know, you ain't just loving because you got plenty of money coming in there to take care of everything. You count this cost up. Listen. Luke 9. Luke 9 and uh, verse 57 through 62. St. Luke 9. I'll be through in a minute. I hope you listen to this here because I see it happen a lot. I mean, it used to happen a lot. I mean, it still happen, but people make promises. People have sat right there in our church and made promises to God. And, they didn't, and, 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 and while they were speaking, God spoke to them and told us to offer. Man, while they were speaking, God told them, oh, it ain't so. So they won't be. So it ain't true. They will not. And I've seen people make promise to God and all this kind of stuff and, and the Holy Ghost just speak. And he spoke to me and said, uh -uh, uh -uh. 
He said, ain't, well, he didn't say it ain't so, but I ain't going to tell you what he said, but in other words, he said it's not so. They, they're saying stuff, but it's not so. Holy Ghost, thank God. Listen, Luke 9, verses 57 through 62. Was that going where I said Luke 9? Yeah, Luke 9. Sorry. I don't know. Verse 57. And it came, and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee wheresoever I go, wheresoever thou go. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air, they all have nests. But the Son of Man don't have nowhere to live here. They wouldn't have followed Jesus. Jesus turned around back, listen now. You're going to follow me. You just can't follow me because you see the miracle. You see the people that are following me. You see the thing that you see the sick getting healed. Man, you see the blind eye getting open to let that the man. I want to follow you wherever, wherever you go. I'm going to follow you. Making that promise because they see all this. They don't know, thank God, that this man is a, 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 a hard road to travel on down there somewhere. Jesus told him that much place in the Bible. That the Bible said that the, 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 the plays were too straight for them. So before we make all these promises, he said, Master, I'll follow you wherever you go. Oh my God, my mind just run back to some thing that let me tell you something. Jesus is going to hold us accountable. I'm telling you, I've, I've told people, don't make promises to God until you got your mind made up. You know? I learned that in fasting. I used to fast enough. And uh, I used to go, my, take my, I make a vow to God. I go on a vow for three days or seven days or whatever amount of days I'm going to do. And I said, God, I vow. I make a vow to you. Lord, I'm going to do these days. And you know why I never do them days? Because I'm afraid to break that vow. Because God said, you better not make a vow and don't keep it. And if I make a vow, that way I, I, I've set my heart. Because I'm afraid to, to make a mess. I keep myself on the fasting and praying. I have a vow to God. That's even a 14 day fast, a, a 21 day fast, God, I vow to you to do the amount of days. And, and I, I fight through that thing. But I learned not to make no vow to God if you, ain't, if you if you got any kind of sense that you may not keep it. Just don't make that vow. Just pray to God, help me. Said, help, I want to do this thing. God, you help me to do this thing. I want to go with you. You help me to walk with you. you know, I ain't make no big old promise, God, because I don't know just where I'm at in it. But you help me. This is my desire. This is my heart. Yeah. This because you're feeling good. Don't jump up and make a lot of... Uh, Promise to God because you're feeling good at the time. Because that spirit ain't gonna be there all the time. And that joy, that good feeling ain't gonna be there all the time. You know, the feeling we get in church, we sing and shout and then and just feeling God, you feel like you can love everybody, man, and you ready to embrace everybody, to hug and kiss. And like, yes, sister, I love you, brother, I love you. You know, you're feeling good because you're under that influence. But man, when you get time out there, man, words start to come in on you, words start to come in at you. And you don't you don't look, but you don't make you don't make them vibe. Cut the phone off. You know? So it's a matter of fire. Where, where you go? He cut this thing down. Matter of fire, you were saying, I go. G told me to listen to this. Birds of the air have nests and foxes have over. Birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man have not where to lay his head. Listen. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first. To go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto them, unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow. Listen to this. And looking back is fit for the Jesus. We ain't fit for it. 
If we make them promise to God, then turn around, look back and turn back to God, so we ain't fit for it. Not that he won't have mercy. Not that he won't help us. But he said, we ain't fit. Thank God we got a merciful God. Got a merciful say, he said, we ain't fit for it. We probably didn't promise God we're going to do this and do that. Then turn around and turn our back and get back to our thing get hard. Thing get rough. Thank God we come under persecution. Come on, some kind of trial and test. And we turn back and give up on that promise that we made God. He said, we ain't fit for the kingdom of God. So let, don't let what you feel. Oh, sister, I love you. Brother, I love you. You know, you know how we get in church. Man, the spirit of God be moving in there, man. Everything be... And you just feel like you can love everybody, man. You ready to hug them and kiss them and I love you, sister. I love you, brother. Get out that thing, start to go around. You hear something bad about you, man. Let me tell you something. That love and that stuff goes out the window. You know. Because you in you on the atmosphere of that that love of God. That we start, and so we start to say and stuff and doing stuff. Let me tell you something. Then ask God to God look in our heart and get our heart clean. I pray about God created me a clean heart. Have a new right spirit in me. I was praying this morning. God, put a right spirit in me. You mean clean heart? Because you know what? I said, God, I was praying. I said, God, I want, I want to, I want you, I want to have a big, clean heart and the right spirit. Because I need you to answer my prayer. I need you to hear. I don't need to have a, a foul, messed up spirit. It's because God created me a clean heart and put a right spirit in me because I need your help. I need you to. Heal me when I pray, when I call upon you. I need you so you put a right spirit in me and a clean heart. I don't have no old messed up foul spirit in me. Then that's thinking God's going to do something for you that God's going to answer. You know? You, you, you choose. You, you, you know. Don't let the good music make you make decisions and, that you, and, then, and then you don't keep them somewhere. Listen, listen to this. He said, the fox have hold and the bird have neck, but the son of man, if you want to follow me, I'm telling you right now, the son of man has no place to lay his head. Thank God, don't just go about because you see what God has done for you. you know? Man, you got to, God bless you with that. We always like to use Cadillac. It's just a common car to me. But we always use it that people does. And then when you get so man, you, you can't meet the notes so they come pull it. And then you stop honoring God. You, know, you, you stop believing God. You stop trusting God because you feel like God let them down. Let me tell you something. It ain't always, uh, it ain't always a, 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 a bed of roses, folks. That is some testing time. That's some trying time. We are going to be uh, tested. Lord, I often say God's going to find out what's in our hearts. It, don't, it doesn't matter what we say to our brothers, our sisters. It doesn't matter how we testify before them. It doesn't matter how we tell them we love God. We, you know, really do. God's going to find out. That don't mean nothing. I mean, if you, you know, if you're just saying it. God's going to find out do we mean what we say. I said, God, have mercy upon our soul and help us to mean what we say. Make no difference what we have to go through, what we have, how we have to deny ourselves, how we have to bend back over back. But God, help us to mean what we say and help us to some kind of way find a way. Find a way to do it. Find a way to hold it up. Find a way to support what we have said. And I'm asking God, God, help me. Sometimes the thing ain't, it ain't the easy thing. I tell you that right now. But God, God help us to find a way. Help us to be like faith. You know, faith to find a way to come through. So we don't want to just get in the atmosphere of things. Too many people like that now. It gets in the atmosphere. And they make promise to God. I think about my nephew. I have to look at If you really want God, you're really sincere, then God, you figure out in your heart. God, it's you I want, Jesus. It's you I want. Don't just promise them stuff and say stuff because you're in a, 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 a position that God gets you out of it, then you're going on like this, and God holds you responsible. And sometimes God, we make God promise. Sometimes we ask God to do this for me, do that for me, and God to do it. And then we go and forget about God and somewhere, and we get to another message, and God be looking at that. God said, listen, no, why should I do that, man? You know, already... You promised this and you ain't did this. You fell back on it. And sometimes it look like we can't get no help. You got to be sent back. Look, you're going to do this again. So we need to look. Make sure. If we ain't sure, just don't say it. Don't do it. 
Ask God to help you to lead you and to guide you and get you into this place, folks. Listen to this. Thank God. What are we? John, listen up. Let's go to Exodus 12. Exodus 12, verses 29, 32. And give me just a few more minutes and I'll be out of your hair. Thank you, Father. Exodus 12. And I'll be through with you. I'll let you get on back to doing what you got to do. So keep our brothers and sisters up in prayer. Let's thank God to help us. Exodus 12, verses 29 to 32. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that set on the throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the, in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cows. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead person. Then and he called for Moses, listen, and Aaron by night, and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as ye have said. Also take your flocks and your herds, and ye as ye have said, and be gone what? And what? Bless me also. Man, I, he got it after God had to do all them miracles, bring, bring all them plagues, those ten plagues, of all that stuff upon Pharaoh. And Pharaoh got up under that, under that influence. Thank God that power of God. So he said, listen, be gone, Moses. Just take all your, your peoples and your flocks and all this stuff and, and be gone. But he was under that, under that influence right there. And he just wanted to get rid of him, get out of here. Oh, but something happened. He changed. After they had left, he changed. That spirit changed in him, you know. Be gone. And while you're going, bless me too. Bless me also. Yeah. Let's go over to 14 and 1. Exodus 14 and verses 1 through 8. And as the, as the Pharaoh told him, y'all be gone. Get up, leave. Y'all go ahead. Go ahead. He agreed to most of them turn. He agreed to because he was under that, or that, that, that power of God for that. And he got under that influence of God. He, he said, listen, it be gone. But somewhere, Mo, uh, Pharaoh's heart changed. Somewhere, it, it changed. I don't know if you listen. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before, encamp before, put out that word between Migdal and the sea over against Bear Zephon before it shall be encamped by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land and the wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be on, upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts. And the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Pharaoh's heart changed again. And they agreed to let them go. He was under the influence of God, that, that mighty signs and power of God that he wrote through Moses and it called Pharaoh chamber. Look at Pharaoh, after he found out they was gone, so they really gone. Man, so why do we let them go? Who's going to build our temple? Who's going to make our bricks? Who's going to make our mortar? And this is what the devil do to us now. We, we get happy about serving God and then when the time get rough, thank God, man, I can't go out there and pardon no more. You get in a tight, you used to go out there and pull in a kind of old, old evil on God. Look, Man, to get old, but you can't do it no more. And he said, God, the man, look, man, look, I, I, I used, I've heard people say it, but I did better than that man without, when I was out in the street. No, you didn't. You, you didn't do no better. 
I did better than that when I was out in the street. No, you didn't. You just thought you did. Thank God you was on your way to the devil's, devil's damnation then. You know. The, so Pharaoh said, man, Pharaoh, man, mind change. His heart got hot again. Thank God that the devil do. He'll make it hard for us, man, put us in a situation and turn around and change our mind to promise that we have promised God to love him, to live for him, to go for him. You know, the same way that marriage vow, you know. You promise to forsaken all of them, for him alone, for her alone. I do, I do, shoot. Man, no sooner they don't burn, the, no sooner they burn the bread, and no sooner, man, they, uh, the, the man uh, blow a little money out of his paycheck. Thank God you're ready to kick him out. Thank God, and the woman she ready to leave, because he spent the next month. The man ready to leave the woman because she burned the bread up. Uh, uh, or something like that. And we said, do you, you forsaken all of them? For her alone, to death, do you part? I do. We make them promise sometime, let me tell you. And at least a little thing, thank God, busts us up, separate us, call us to go our way. We make me promise. And I often tell people, that vow, that ain't to, you make, you make that vow to God, you make that vow before God. You know. And sometimes we got to figure this thing out. We got to work this thing out. We got to, Man, you get on that influence, yeah, man, I'm finna have me a husband. I'm finna have me a wife, man. We gonna have a good time. Man, you know, we ain't got to be out there in the streets no more. Ain't got to be doing everything I need at home. And then when the problem rise up, man, we better kick him out. We better leave him. He said, I do. You know? We make promise to God. You know? My brother, you don't know what I'm going through. I sure don't know what you're going through, but God knows. But whatever, I tell you this, folks, whatever you're going through, Jesus is able to see you through it. Whatever you're going through, Jesus, okay, whatever they're fighting you out there. You may be getting to having a rough stuff like that, but Jesus is well able to. He said, listen, to, you didn't choose me. I chose you and ordained you that you should go. Listen, I chose you. I ordained you. Man, folks, remember this. He chose you and ordained you. Whatever it is out there you got to go, he ordained you for that for that work. He ordained you for that call. He ordained you to, to stand. He ordained you to stand firm, knowing that you can go through it. You're going to survive it. You're going to survive it, folks. You're going to survive it. Know that God said, I've chosen you for this. Don't jump out. Because thing get rough. Let me finish this up. Verse 5. And it was told the king of Egypt, that the people fled, and he hollered Pharaoh, and of his servant was turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him, and he took 600 chosen chariots, throwing everything out of the sink. The Bible says he chose 600 chosen chariots. This is what the devil do. The devil, man, he gets... He, he get his special imps to fight against you. Because you made that promise to God. You made that vow to God. And man, he, he put out his best to get you back, to make you renege on what you had told God. And the devil ain't just shooting some little old stuff at you. He's shooting his best at you because he's trying to get you back. He's trying to prove to God, thank God, that you don't mean what you say, that you's a liar. And I spoke this weekend, and I think about Job, that he, he held his integrity. They were going to make Job forget God, but he couldn't do it. Listen, he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Israel and captains over them, one of, one of the, every one of them. And the Lord hardened, the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a what? High hand. Folk, you make a promise to God, the devil going to send something your way. He's going to send something your way to make you change, make you renege on what you told God. It's coming your way, folks. So when you make some make some conscious decision, Josh said, choose you this day who you're going to serve. Make some conscious decision. Don't just make decisions because you get happy and joy and you, know, you feel the Spirit of God coming around. That's good. I love to feel the Spirit of God. But let me tell you something. You start making a decision like that because you feel the Spirit of God. The devil coming there somewhere. The devil, he coming. He heard you. He saw you. And he's coming. 
He's coming at you. He's coming to get you. So you made some sound choices, some sound decision. You know, you you count this cause up. You figure out what's all involved, and it's God. I'm about to deny myself. I'm about to take up this cross. I'm about to follow you. Lord, I'm about to, I'm about to love my enemies. I'm about to do good to them that don't do good to me. You know, I'm about to forgive them that won't forgive me. You know? And like everything, all the hell breaking loose and the devil shooting his best shots at you. You, know, you got to remember the promise that we made to God. Said so God, help me, forgive me. And if, if those of you out there that have made promise to God and die and, and, the, and the devil and kind of throws you off of them, listen. Ask God, say, God, forgive me and help me. Help me. So I meant that when I said, but God, the devil got in the way here, and I, I done backed off. I renewed what I told you. Say, so will you forgive me? Please forgive me and help me. God is a forgiving God. And he's a forgiving God. He will forgive. That's the kind of God. He will forgive us. Yeah. We was talking yesterday, maybe today, talking. Sister Bruce, that's the guy said, he look. We got an advocate. With the Father, Jesus Christ. If any man sin, we got an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. If any man sin, we got somebody there to help us, somebody there to forgive us. So if you made any kind of promise to God, I ask Lord to forgive me. And I try not make God make promise to God, you know. And I just set out to do things. Set out. I said, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do this, and I set out to do it, but not making no promise to God because when you promise God, I know the Lord said, "Listen here." I honor my word. He said, I'll watch over my word, what? To perform it, to make it good. He said, listen, I'll, in other words, one translation said, look, I'll seek, I'll seek out for a way. I'll seek out a way to bring my word to pay. He said, if it ain't down there, I'll seek out a way. I'll search and find out a way to bring my word to pay. In other words, I'll watch over my word to make it good. God said, listen, if I do that for you, we need to strive and press it. God, help me to, help me to keep my promise. But just don't let me make promises. Let me just... <laughs> and God will help you. Praise God. So I want to encourage you. Don't just make decisions because you feel good. Make promise to God. You know, Peter and them, Peter and them experienced that. And they, they saw all the miracles of God and see Jesus. And then they feel good. And they feel in the presence of God. They feel like, well, Lord, I can. I, this is who I want to be with. This is who I want to follow. You know. But, but then things got rough out there. Folk things get rough. And we don't know what. We don't know what lies ahead for us. We do not know what lies ahead for us. We just we just don't know that. But we pray, God, whatever we promise you, you help us to obey it. So, Lord, I done came short. I done fell short to help me to obey. Get me back. Forgive me. Restore me back. Hold on to that place, Lord. And God will help you. Thank God. I said, Lord, we have to thank God. Give me a hand and pray. We, we appreciate the Lord tonight. Thank God. We're going to give it. Let's go. I certainly appreciate your prayer. As I encourage be praying for those. There'll be those that need your prayers. Some of your brothers and sisters need, need your prayers. And uh, that God will help them. He'll sustain us. The Bible said we got to pray one for another. The Bible tells in Romans 15, I believe, said that, uh, that uh, we didn't let our strong or the bad, the infirmity of the weak. And not to please ourselves. So as we pray God help us to do it. You know, I've been praying, God, just give me that mind. Give me that spirit that I just want. A lot of decisions, folks, you want to make. Consider your brothers. Consider your sisters. Consider your neighbors. That Before you make that decision, before you say that thing, before you do that thing, consider you, consider those that are involved. Consider them. You know, I was talking to somebody today. I said, listen here, when we do film, we don't, we don't uh, get up and try to dig. Oh, you know, they did this, they did done that, and all, you know, yeah, that. Find something good. Consider people out there. Consider loved ones. Consider the family. And consider people out there. And try to find something good to say about them. It don't mean you put them in one place or the other. Just find something good. Before we make decisions and show like that, we need to consider our brothers and sisters. Consider those that are involved and how it's going to affect them. The Bible says we are our brother's keeper. And we consider how that's going to affect them. I've been asking God, God, help me. Teach me how to do it. Teach me. Give me that mind that we can consider this stuff. You know, sometimes too often we blot out stuff and say stuff and blot out stuff and not considering other individuals that involve, other individuals that's going to affect them, how it's going to affect them. It's going to be negative to them or it's going to be uh, some kind of positive strength. So we, we need to be 
Follow Jesus. Paul said, follow me as I follow Jesus. Thank you. Thank God. We appreciate the Lord. We're going to pray and ask God to meet every need you got out there. That God will help you. That he'll be merciful to you. And he'll sustain you. For that. I'm so long, Jesus. I'm hung up on me. Cole. For me, Jesus is the only help we got. For me, Jesus, I said, Jesus, you know you're the only, you're the only help I got. And I don't look, look to nothing there for my eyes, no, nothing but Jesus, no, nothing but Jesus. Father, thank you tonight. I really appreciate you, Lord. I'm just trying to be plain and common. Lord, bless the people. Lord, you, you, I ask you often to look in my heart. No, when I talk to you, when I pray, I try to pray sincerely, Lord. I try to, sometimes I, I be more, look like caught up in the spirit than other times, but God, all, always I try to pray from my heart and talk to you. Sometimes I feel a little, I don't know what I feel because I don't feel like it's really, it's coming from the depth of my heart, but I be trying to. But God, I, I pray, Lord, that you meet the needs of your people tonight. What, to help our children that have to uh, go to school on this old online learning. Some of them are struggling with that. God, I pray. Lord, if you would strengthen our kids, Lord, and help them, and the parents that have to help them. You have to give them patience and give them an understanding, God, that they'd be able to help. Move for your people, Lord, in this time that we're living in, God, in this old virus that's going out. God, I'm asking you every day that you would help us. That you keep us, Lord, that you kept the children of Israel in the camp of Goshen. Lord, will you watch over us? Will you be mindful of us? To help us, I beg you, Father. Can't nothing else do this but you. And I'm asking you, Jesus, let us find favor with you, Lord. Let us find grace in your eyes as you did Rahab that harlot. Lord, she's a harlot, but she found grace with you. And you spared her life and her family. Although that her family member that gathered in that house, you spared them, Lord. And I pray tonight, God, that you would touch our hearts. Everyone, God, that be hearing my voice and some that don't hear, God, that maybe listen other time. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, God, that you would be with them, help them, work it out, whatever they in, work it out for them. Mighty God, work it out, God. I pray, work it out for them, God. Fix it. Heal our bodies, Lord. Move in the hospital and get those people, your people that's in there. Move, God. Get them out of there, Father. I pray your mercy. I pray, God, that you move in a mighty way. Break every yoke, every habit, every stronghold, every habit Lord, that the devil has put off on your people. I'm asking you in Jesus' name, Lord, to break it off of them. And God, help us to cleave to you, help us to be strong in you. And we are thank you for this night. Lord, we ask that you go with us, Lord. Keep us safe. Keep us through this night. Keep us safe under your protection. Hide us in your, behind your cross and let us find that secret place in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, and I thank you. Praise God. We appreciate the Lord tonight. And go ahead and give him a good hand praise and praise. And listen, we got you in prayer. Listen, don't forget to pray for me because I need your prayers. Keep up in prayer. The Bible says it affects your further prayers of a righteous person, a righteous man, a righteous person, a righteous individual. It, it avails much. So keep us in prayer. Keep your brothers and sisters in prayer. Until the next time, God bless you. Praise God.